you know, I tell you, there's, there's a big question today because there are all of these people who believe that young earth creationism cannot possibly be science. It can't possibly be correct because so many scientists disagree with it. Spell that out for us. It's a question I often get from reporters. They'll start by saying, so you're a scientist, yes. You disagree with the mainstream community, yes. You don't agree with evolution, correct. So what do we do? And they usually give me one of two poisonous options. Do we, do we invoke some sort of vast conspiracy? Because they know 90 plus percent of scientists, they say evolution is true, there's no divine participation. And so they say, do you say there's some, some big, deep, dark secret they're hiding? Or do we just throw out science? Hmm. And which of those do you want to pick? Look like a fool here, or look like a fool here? Yeah. And what I found is many people don't know that that sort of logic undermines everything that evolutionists stand on if you apply it back to Darwin himself. Okay. So he admitted, and again, I think most people don't know this, he admitted in his book, he, he goes through all the evidence, gets the closing chapter, tries to then deal with the reaction of the audience. What are they going to say? And he knows, and he, he says directly in his book, he said, why, why it may be asked, have all the most eminent living naturalists and geologists rejected this view, his hmm. view? And okay then walks the reasons why he thinks this should change. But just that fact alone, the logic today being you disagree with whatever the consensus is, as right. if consensus decides truth. You apply that logic back to Darwin, well, then we should reject evolution. It's dead on arrival because the consensus of 1859 rejects his view. Okay. So that, that logic doesn't work and does not hold any water if you try to apply it today. But that's, that's what you hear all the time when they find out, oh, you don't, you don't agree? Well. What's wrong with you? As if that somehow is, is the measure of truth. Right. Well, now, as a scientist, explain this. Explain the scientific method and explain how really we should be questioning everything. We should be trying to test and observe everything, right? Yeah. And there's, there's some wisdom in trusting what many people have arrived at. But again, this is not absolutely true. And Darwin himself I think, laid the groundwork for going about challenging a consensus. If you, if you look how he answered his own question, mm -hmm. so why should, why should we disagree? He gave about four reasons why he thought this was valid. One is he said, let's just go through what I've covered, the previous chapters, all the evidence I've laid out. He said, this, is, this to me is fairly convincing, and I think anyone who reads this with an open mind will think that way as well. Okay. And then he walked through human psychology which again has not changed from my perspective in 150 years. He said, we're always slow in admitting any great change of which we do not see the intermediate steps. So if people's view is here mm -hmm. and what the person is proposing is 180 degrees opposite, mm -hmm. it's not easy to completely change your mind. And I've seen this in person. I remember giving a lecture on dinosaurs at a Baptist college in Texas and a student who grew up in the public school system, Christian, professing Christian, came to me. It was just a worldview talk and he, he was distraught saying, Everything you've said is the opposite of what I've learned. And he felt like he had to do a brain transplant. Mm -hmm. And I said, whoa, right. slow down. You can't change your mind that fast. You have to walk through this slowly. You've gone through years of education learning one way, and I'm telling you the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. You can't do this overnight. So Darwin recognized that. I think everyone else would be wise to recognize when, I, when, when creationists come along, challenge things, take it slow. It is a big change, but it's, it's going to happen slowly. Darwin knew it. We, we know it today, and we should, we should apply the same thing. And when you just take an immediate jump from one view to another, that seems radical, right? It's like, you, exactly. You actually have to look at what's there and then logically process that. And if you have a habit of just jumping from one to the other, you're probably just as easily going to jump to something else the next time it comes around. And to me, that's not the goal. The Bible talks about that, doesn't it? It says, tossed about by every wind of doctrine. Swinging on a door, swinging on a tinges. You don't want to be that person. No, no, no. Walk through it slowly. Yeah. He also mentioned, uh, and, and I couldn't believe he got away with this in, in Victorian England. He says, I by, and this is why I want to quote it directly, just so you hear from, from the man's mouth himself. Mm -hmm. I by no means expect to convince experienced naturalists whose minds are stocked with a multitude of facts during a long course of years, all viewed from a point directly opposite to mine. Mm -hmm. I look with confidence to the future, to young and rising naturalists who will be able to question both sides uh, with impartiality. And, and sadly, I've seen the same thing in, in my own years of doing this and seeking constructive criticism because mm -hmm. I'm not perfect and the conclusions I reach, I want them criticized. They will get criticized whether I want them to or not. Yes. And those who have been doing this for a long time, whose career rests on this, I don't see them changing their mind because they've done this for so long. And uh, 
I don't see the consensus changing just like that because you have so many people who have been entrenched in this for so long. That, that, that applies equally as well. And then Darwin points out his fourth reason for changing the consensus is there's contradictions in, in the opposing views. They'll, and and he, he says this is part of the deficiency in, in why the consensus should be changed. The mm -hmm. way they try to protect and keep it established tells you mm -hmm. this is not all it's cracked up to be. If it was as strong a position as the consensus implies, right. it should be able to stand without people constantly patching it up and, and adding a protection here and keeping opposition out. And, and all those things to me apply just as well to the creation model today. It's, it's ripe for uh, just as much of a revolution as, as it was in Darwin's day. So you're saying that this is just as relevant. What Darwin wrote is just as relevant today that experienced scientists are probably, they have their mind set. They have their mind made up. And to try to convince them otherwise of what they have learned in college, in school, in university, on TV, in textbooks, Everywhere they turn, they've been steeped in this one view to try to convince those of anything different may be very difficult unless they have an extremely open mind to view new evidence. We should be looking to new science, right? Because the old antiquated science of Darwin's day, we found out a lot of new things since then, haven't we? And it hasn't pointed towards Darwin's view. Yeah, and we've seen predictions made half a century ago that should confirm evolution. If evolution is true, they'll say, then we should see this in the world. We should see this in genetics. We should mm -hmm. see this in the fossil record. Mm -hmm. And then we find the opposite. And then that opposite discovery morphs into evidence for evolution. Okay. How can that be possible? Right. Two mutually exclusive things, both of them being evidence. If everything fits evolution, then nothing does. It's not, a, it's not an explanation that works. Hmm. So that's, that's a major hole in that. And, and thinking back to what the reporter's question is that, that I typically get asked. Right. So what do you do? I usually, I usually say, and, and this relates directly to, to this entrenched mindset, I said, neither, neither of those poisonous options that you just gave me works. It's not that there's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's not that we throw out science. Mm -hmm. it's, really a, it's a really mundane explanation. All these scientists, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. grow up for whatever reason. This is just an empirical observation. They go through high school. They go through, they go through elementary, junior high, high school, mm -hmm. only evolution college only evolution, PhD only evolution. They are not even aware of what modern young earth creationists believe, mm -hmm. the types of science that they endorse. They aren't testing those hypotheses. And so someone comes along proposing almost out of the blue, mm -hmm. given their educational upbringing, mm -hmm. something totally out of left field. It hits them like a ton of bricks. 